I'm not even going to bother explaining this because all of you know about SQL, right? So let's ditch that. On the right hand side, um, data stored, non-relational, key values, flexi schema. So I got that covered, right? No joins. In NoSQL, ain't no nothing. You're not going to get any joins, right? Your from will have only one table. You don't even have to alias. Got that. So all the flexing of muscles, brain muscles. I know brain doesn't have muscles, but whatever it is, you know how it goes, right? Where you are showing off your giant big queries that you wrote, right? This huge page queries, maybe multiple pages and you stuck it in your cubicle. That's a query I wrote, dude. Got that. All of those skills, right, is gone for a toss. I'm giving you my real life thing, right? When I was uh, working, I don't work anymore. You know that, right? Jobless guy. Right. I actually had, believe it or not, I was um, a technical uh, consultant for Oracle Financials. It had some 30 odd modules and I was handling three, GL, AP and AR, three modules. And believe it or not, when I say this, one of the reports had a query that ran into close to 20 such A4 uh, uh, size pages. When you look at that, you develop cold feet. When you look at that, you develop cold hands. But you keep looking at that for a couple of months, you begin to understand, right, how it works. Got that. It takes a little time. But then the moment you crack that, that's a moment of pride. In NoSQL, you ain't going to getting that pride. Because your NoSQL query will be select a blue from blah, where, kutuku. That's it. So your query will be about that size versus 26 pages. Got that? So your interview questions are all gone. <laughs> what will you ask? The guy will say, hey boss, one table, one query only. You're not going to get any joins. But you know what this entails? This entails how do you create a model whereby you get everything in that one query. You get what I'm saying? A term to be used in case of NoSQL is called as write time join versus read time join. Help me understand. Boss, where do you work? Don't answer that question. You work somewhere. And every time this poor thing, now you have a real appreciation of this thing. Got that. He has to go out there and pick this record, pick this record, put them together and return it back to you. Are you there? For values which don't change, you are continuously joining them again and again and again and again. For what? Abe, he's, this guy is the manager here. Yeah? You got what I'm saying? Why are you joining again and again? So what would you do? You now know the notion of denormalization in the context of this. You're essentially going to say for as long as dude you're reporting into him, you two will recite together in a single row. So when I create this record, don't you think I have to put this together? Huh? At the time of writing, I join, write time join. That's what a NoSQL is about. Whereas he is all about read time join. Exactly. Makes sense. So write time join will kind of bind you down to only that particular data set. If you also want boss, what department he belongs to and that I don't have. You get that. Which also means what you have to work backwards from queries. What do you want? Don't worry. I'm not mad. Yeah. Question. Let me finish this drama. After that, I'll take the question. What do you want? Right? I want this, this and this. That's what you want? Okay. I will create a model. Who I was talking to? Business. You know those other guys. Uh, but you got the idea. I work backwards from what the query is and I create a model. Why? Because a NoSQL will give me blazing performance. Why? Because it does not do any of these joints on the fly. It will not go out there and randomly search for data from all over the disk and try and put it together. Won't do any of that. Why? Because the data is contiguously on the disk. Are you there with me? Yep. That's exactly how you model in NoSQL. Get it? So which means if these are the approaches, then obviously the engine has to be different. Can a SQL be made to look like a NoSQL? Of course. An SQL engine can be made look like a NoSQL, no doubts about that. But will it be truly NoSQL? Not really. Okay. Designed for access patterns is what I talked about. Access patterns is a fancy word of saying, what do you want? What is the query? No, no, you're not going to ask the business the query. 
You're going to say, dude, what exactly are you lo looking for? And I'll create a model based on that. Next, good for optimized read-based systems, high availability write systems. All of you will have high memory. I'm going to have you guys well balanced, good balance of CPU and memory. You guys very high in memory. Why? Because uh, I think in the last one year you would have uh, come across Spark. Surely you would have done that. That Spark is nothing but a master slave model. It will do map reduce and all that. So this thing, imagine I cut right from the middle. You, what kind of an analogy is that? One half is Cassandra, second half is Spark. You got what I'm saying? Spark is obviously in memory map reduce. Right? You would have done all of that. I read it from the internet, so that's why I'm telling you. See, right? What internet has done? I cut you in half, fifty fifty, like this. All of you, make sense? All of this guy, this particular data center. In other words, this data center. I'm not even looking at all of you. This data center. You are my analytics data center. Got that? You will require high memory, therefore given. Make sense? All of this data center right here is my OLTP who is catering to my end customers. Dude, you better be really, really fast. I give you good balance of memory and CPU. For example, Solar integration, Lucene integration, Stratio integration. Again, you are split in half. Elastic search, everything is Lucene. Okay, got that. So that is what I do. If you notice now with Cassandra, what did I do? I created three zones specific for use case. I'm not saying, dude, you have to do analytics. You have to do joins. You also have to give me the fastest uh, data retrieval. I'm not saying you alone have to do that. Why? Because are you one individual machine, what can he do? What can it do? Are you with me? So I can split the workload in a cluster. Makes sense. Cassandra allows you to do that. Got it? So that I can send the appropriate use case to the appropriate set of nodes. I will never ask you to do analytics. That's not what I have configured you for. Got that? I will never ask you to do search because that's not what I have configured for. Search and analytics will never come to you guys. You will only cater to my end customers. So the question is, there is a need. I'm very happy that you're thinking in these lines, right? Why? Because if you're sprinkling your data across all of this, how do you know? Remember, I made a passing reference that Cassandra is nothing but a glorified hash map. Got that? Maybe something from there Cassandra will do to keep track of where the data needs to go and what kind of workload needs to be sent to where. So actually, um, Cassandra has something called as system.local and system.peers. I will talk about very briefly in terms of what the ring architecture is. So you'll know every single Cassandra node knows what it's responsible for and what its peers are responsible for. Now, from an application perspective, if I'm sending a search, what will happen is the search master knows that all of you are search slaves. So I always contact the search master. Dude, can you go out there and get me this? So this will contact all of you. Make sense. So I configure Elasticsearch or Solar or whatever it is, right, or Stratio. Right, to make sure whenever the master is contacted, the worker nodes are always here and not here. That's how I route my search uh, traffic. When I talk to my uh, Spark master, right, I am the Spark master. I know these are my worker nodes. Why will I reach out anywhere here? Make sense? When I talk about OLTP traffic, I essentially say these are the sets of IP addresses. Go reach out and ask anyone. That's how I split the traffic. Okay. Next, seamless data replication. I'm inserting data, but I'm going to ask for search. So somebody has got to transfer this data from here to there. I'm going to now use the term data center. This is data center one. This is data center two. This is data center three. So I should be able to seamlessly send data across all the data centers. Make sense? So a lot of NoSQLs will give you that capability as well. To set up multi data center uh, settings, or other uh, installations across multiple regions. It's a good fun thing to do. In Cassandra, there is nothing called as transactions. If you notice, I have been always saying operations. I've been very careful about my words. Otherwise, you'll catch me. Got that. Why did I say operation? Because you just insert, you just fetch. 
I'll tell you also, right? Why do you need transaction? Transaction means you love that transaction, you know, connection dot commit, connection dot rollback. It's so much good fun, isn't it? Chalo, application has been written and tested. Okay, and let's assume the tester has done a good job. What else? How about referential integrity? Right, not nulls. Any of this is available in NoSQL. Then what is the real reason for failure? Exactly what you mentioned. The node is not available. Whatever. That node may be down, network is out, who cares? Got that? That is the only reason. Stands for partition tolerance. What that means, don't have to answer this question. Keep your hand on your heart and think, how many copies of the most important financial documents you keep? Remember we talked about a little while back? You got a one terabyte disk, which is your backup. And then you also have a backup of a backup. There must be a reason for all that, no? Right? You talk about the younger generation. I got an 18 year old at home. Right? That thing is more worried about the songs and the photographs. Right? Everything else is just incidental. Got that? Those are the auxiliary things which eat up space. The, the disk is to be consumed with photos and songs. Got that. And you have backup of backup as well. She tells me that give me that I want to back up. Why are you doing that? Because you're saying if I lose this disk, I need an alternate copy to fetch it from. <coughs> Context is replication factor. Replication factor. In a NoSQL, you will never find anybody create a model where you have only one copy of data where you have only one copy of data. Get that? Exactly the same reason why you keep multiple copies of your most important data. Get that? Now think about it like this. If I have a piece of data, this is some data, some record, some operation, something that I want to capture, customer order perhaps. I, now you, um, you are done. You have, I am now upgrading you. You are no longer a very old, feeble, Database, you are now part of the modern community, which is you are also a node of NoSQL. So now imagine this. Here is one copy of your record. Replication factor and partition tolerance says that perhaps the good number would be three. Let's assume. Why three? It doesn't matter. Right. First copy, second copy, third copy. Now what is my attitude to you? Yeah. You see, my attitude has changed significantly. Why? Because I got multiple <laughs> copies. If you are not available, I still have these two nodes, perhaps, to fetch the data from. Now, whether it's going to be these two nodes or those two nodes, that we will see later. Make sense? So far with me. That's called as partition tolerance in CAP theorem. I am able to tolerate a partition down. Partition in this context is called, is called as one, one machine. Right? So there must be something when you create in systems like these, where you get to specify what is called as a replication factor. And for every given token, I will talk about token. Remember, how many of you do not know what a hash map is? What a hash map is, I will talk about a little bit later, right? But just assume that these are nothing but buckets, right? Buckets of data. Got that? If I know, right, who am I? Imagine I'm kind of this, this node right here. If I know that you're responsible for this bucket of data, if I get that particular data, can I not pass it on to you? Hey, dude, this is supposedly your data, man. You keep it. Make sense? I know this is kind of a little bit abstract at the moment. It is not sinking in here. How would you know? What does that lookup look like? Can you show it to us? I will show it to you. I also, I don't think I use that word, but let me use that. Right? It could be a peer-to-peer -peer system. If you two are peers, and if he has some special information, do you think that makes them peers? If two nodes are not identical, they cannot be peers. Got that. So what I have is what you have. Communist. I have two cows, you also have two cows. So what will end up happening? That system.local and system.peers I talked about. System.local is your buckets. System.peers is all your peers buckets. Every single node has that information. Peer-to-peer -peer system. Are you getting this? Very important. So that's how I can catch hold of a random node. You take this data. What does it do? It basically finds out, oh, this data, I let me figure out which bucket it needs to go to. 
my system dot local say, oh yeah, system dot local it i am going to have that data all sorted no problem otherwise that node knows that that data has to flow to you makes sense that's the lookup i'm talking about system dot local system dot ps which is very important for your analytics as well otherwise you would say hey boss you are special yeah right everybody has to hammer this node right like a million request per second i showed you the use case imagine a million request will come to him boss tell me where to put this he will say boss i will keep serving you or i have to also work no you got that then it's not a master slave uh, sorry a masterless model at all it's a master slave model and imagine what happens if he decides to go and lay, to go to lay in ladakh so the main source of the distribution itself is dead now tell me how will you accept data can you you can't make sense i cannot allow that sir although i would love to treat you very special right first row and everything right but i'm very sorry to say you are as important to me as that gentleman sitting right at the back there is no difference between you two because you two are peers got what i'm saying that's how you do things in a no sql which is masterless and i will prove it to you cap theorem by the brewer's cap theorem you guys have heard heard yes no yes no 